Hello, Gabe Heller here, Jihon Zoller on YouTube and Hannah Brown Couch on Twitch, and it's time for another unboxing. Here we have an envelope. Does it just peel up? Hmm? Nope. Well, maybe. Nah, not really. Okay, let's go in with a knife. It's very sticky because I peeled off the mailing label. Alrighty, what do we have here? It is a box. I feel like I already have a box like this. What is in the box? Aha! It is a SATA cable. Four SATA cables, adapter cables, power adapter cables, some zip ties, a bag of tiny jumpers, and a card. Kind of a card is it? Aha! It is a slot card, but it doesn't plug into the motherboard, though it looks like it's got a little place to hold it in place in case there is something there for it to plug into, but no actual connectors on there. This is a power switch. So you can turn power on and off to things that are inside the computer, specifically SATA devices, that are hooked via this and this. And then I guess, yeah, this is where you hook up SATA power to the card so that it can distribute it. Okay, cool. I seem to remember the picture I saw. No, I think that's right. I think that's right. Okay, so why do I want this? Well, I've prepared some notes here. So here's the thing. Uh, I ordered this device to protect my computer's boot sectors. Now, it's frankly astonishing the number of times I've been faced with a computer that, for whatever reason, has overwritten its own boot sector and bricked itself. And yet, if you think about it, all that has to happen is that a disk write needs to be issued, but somewhere along the line, the data for what track is being written to gets lost or corrupted and set to zero. Worst yet, zero is the most likely value for corrupted or lost data to be set to. It was arguably stupid for PCs to locate such an all-important thing as a boot sector on track zero, where an erroneous write is more likely to destroy it than if it were literally anywhere else on the drive, but this decision was made 40 years ago, and it appears we're just stuck with it. Whether it happened because of an OS bug, or failing memory, bad disk firmware, power surge, or some malicious program, it is a problem I have faced on more occasions than I can count on both hands. In the old DOS days, this problem was recognized, and both PC Tools and Norton, if not others, came with simple tools for checking and fixing the boot sector. For a while, there were motherboards that were sold that warned you if anything tried to write to the boot sector. But these warnings only really worked in text mode, and increasingly, OSs are being written that don't even use text mode and need to be able to modify their own boot sectors due to, you know, security updates and things. Now, now Windows does still come with a recovery console and a fix MBR command, which, let's just say it doesn't seem to actually work nearly as often as Norton or PC Tools utilities did. Linux, well... I mean, it's supposed to be so customizable, it's a much more difficult ask to write a program that's going to just be able to fix an overwritten boot sector that may have been extremely custom. Such a program would be as likely to lose important data that is still there as it would be to actually fix anything. For better or worse, the modern solution is to get another drive, install an OS on it, and then use that OS to rescue any data off the old drive that you may need. But compared with booting up a rescue disk with PC tools on it and running a quick fix, that takes absolutely ages. When I'm in the middle of a big project, I just don't have time to stop and spend a day or two rescuing a machine. So what I did was, before I started any big project, prepare drives, ready, with fully installed and working OSs on them. But if I'm going to have such drives around, why not be able to use those drives and the OSs on them and keep them up to date, ideally without having to open my computer every time I want to do so? Why would I need to do that, though? With a modern motherboard, surely I could have all the drives hooked up at once and simply boot whichever one I want to use at the moment. Well, I tried that recently. I had a Windows drive and a Linux drive in the same PC, and it worked great until some bad memory caused an erroneous write that messed up the MBRs of both drives at once. It's a good thing I had mainly been using the Linux drive, and the Windows drive had no important data on it, or I would have been faced with having to recover data off two drives and reinstall two operating systems to get back to where I started. I'm simply not willing to put up with that happening ever again, which means I need fine control over which drives are enabled without opening the case. Now, some motherboards allow this, but at least the one I have in this machine does not. It automatically detects and enables all drives that are hooked to it. So enter this device. It has four buttons on it. Each button controls whether power flows to a SATA device. Problem hacking solved. With the literal push of a button, I am in control of which drives my motherboard can even see. There's literally no way for one OS, by accident or on purpose, to kill another unless I screw up and enable two drives at once. Unless I feel the need to get dangerous and hook up an on-motherboard SSD. Ugh. But also... 
I can much more easily test drive a new OS without fear that it will somehow kill my current OS as long as I have a spare drive to install it on and I don't have to take drives out and put them in to do it. So, rant over. Now I'm going to install the thing and see if it actually does what it's supposed to. Okay, I'm back. Let's set this to the side. And here we have the computer. It's a bit of a beast. I used to have one in a smaller case, uh, but I had a lot of trouble with that one. I can tell you about it while I'm opening this one. Uh, it worked really well for a very long time. And then I was trying to enable something, change some BIOS setting. And I hit like all the keys to get into the BIOS because I couldn't remember which one it was, like delete and F2 and F8 and all the ones that you might want to hit. And uh, it went into a part of the BIOS. It turns out it has a backup BIOS chip. And the backup BIOS chip, um, let's see, we want this probably, well, that's the bottom. So we want it near the top. So probably this one here. And it looks like I need to take out a screw. It has a backup BIOS chip, so you can have two versions of the BIOS, just in case, you know, for safety. But no one had ever actually put a BIOS on the backup chip. And one of the keys that I had hit was the one that tells it to reboot and swap the chips. Yeah, so I was wondering why it was taking so long to reboot, and then I realized, oh my god, I have accidentally swapped the BIOS with the, bad, with the old one. And uh, yeah, it turned out there was no BIOS on there. And like, okay, so there's like, there's not a jumper on the motherboard, but there's some pins you can short to have it swap the BIOS for you. Uh, but it, it's, it brings up a menu or something, and unfortunately, the onboard graphics was turned off at the time, and the graphic card that I had in there was covering up the place where I needed to do the jumper. So I couldn't have the jumper in place and also have the, the graphics card in place, and so I went to Free Geek and bought a different motherboard and just threw the graphics card that I had in it and then bought the fastest processor that that motherboard could handle, and so we've got this now. And uh, it came with some memory that was actually bad, <laughs> that's the bad memory <laughs> that caused the problem, so it's gone, and this is the good memory that's that's left. Okay, so, done talking about that. Let's go put this in the slot. Here it is. I think maybe I want to hook it up to things first. Okay, so, I've never really found a good place for this. I had it on the bottom before, but then it was really hard to get at, and I needed to get at it when I was messing with things. Uh, I, this is a, a backup SSD that I have, and this here... Is the hard drive, which is not currently hooked up. This has Windows and this has Linux on it. Uh, so, let's see here. We need to hook power. Two powers. Is this going to reach? Maybe not. Oh, yes. It will come around here and then it will reach. Cool. All right. Two power cords hooked to this. Mm. Maybe? Yes. Ha ha! Cool. Okay, then we need two of these cords, at least to start with. I maybe should hook them all up just so that they're all here, because I don't know where else I would look for them, you know? Put them away and I might not be able to find them easily. They are very unique cords. I've not seen anything quite like this before, so... <clears throat> oh no. Which way do they go? They could go this way. Oh, there is a little clip there. Thank goodness. I was like, oh no, how do I know which way they go? Okay. This way, maybe? It doesn't say SATA on this one, but it is a SATA cable. I don't think that's part of the standard is that it says SATA on it. Oh, that is the right way, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then these will just stick onto the card without plugging them into anything, assuming that that is possible. That seems to be possible. There we go. 
Okay, cool. So, the card goes this way. There we are. It goes in here. Oh no. This is designed to hold it in place in a PCI slot. So I guess we're going to have to move it over. I won't be able to have it quite as close to the top as I would like. This is my Linux gaming box. Um, like I said, the Windows hard drive is a recent addition. And I was running Linux when the crash happened. So it's not like I feel horrible for having installed Windows on a drive on this machine. It was, it was Linux that messed it up and the bad memory showed up. There we go. Okay, let's try this. Hopefully this works. It is a PCI slot, isn't it? It looks kind of like one. Yes, there we go. Cool. Hmm. Oh, I think, is that down all the way? I'm not sure. There's like a little gap there. Hmm. Let's loosen this. Make sure that's tight up against the next one. Tight up against the graphics card there. Whatever I do, let's not lose the screw in the black abyss. All right, excellent. Okay, then we need to hook the data cables up to these. Here is a data cable. And it is hooked up. Cool. Another data cable. The other data cable. Make sure they are nicely tightly plugged into the motherboard. Good. Right. Ta da. Okay, that should do it. Let's put it back together and see if it works. Hello, here I am at my gaming machine. Let's uh, turn it on and see what happens. I think all of them are off right now. Assuming out is off and in is on, which is generally the way it's done. Let's run F11 for boot menu. Yes, there's nothing there. Excellent. All righty. Now I'm going to turn one on and just reset the machine and see if that's all it takes. Okay. It doesn't immediately show up. Control Alt Delete. F11 for boot menu. Nope. Okay. Well, I pushed the button on one end. Let's push the button on the other end instead. Doesn't immediately show up. Let's reset. Level for boot menu. Hey, we have a thing. Now I want to see if it boots automatically. So it looks like we've got Linux on the nearest button. Just to let you know this video is over soon. So rub your eyes and scratch your thighs and sing in tune. It's time to find another kind of video. For this one is nearly done, you know. There's a little message there. I hope it doesn't mean I didn't plug something in. Yay! Linux has booted. Alrighty, let us try. Uh, power off, I guess. Well, 
So I'll press the button quickly enough when it resets. Okay, so now we press the first two buttons. I think I heard a hard drive spinning up. Here we are. Let's see if it boots Windows. It's running off a hard drive, so it's not nearly as fast loading as Linux is. Um, but Linux is what I mainly use. I just uh, I mainly have Windows on here so I can play Diablo 2 on this machine. Because um, I don't want to have to set up my laptop for playing Diablo 2 when I'm not streaming. And I'm not set up to stream from up here at the moment, though I have been in the past. I have recorded a lot of stuff from here, in fact. Um, most of the Rainbow Robot series from here. But uh, that's it. Seems to work, so yay! Bye for now. <laughs>